Hello and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kong Has Problems. Tonight in grade 5 in module 2 in lesson number 24, we are dividing decimal dividends by multiples of 10. And we are reasoning about the placement of the decimal point and making connections to our regular standard algorithm. So let's take a look at what we mean for tonight's homework. I'm going to do a couple problems from tonight's homework. The directions for number 1 are pretty straightforward. Number 1, divide. Show how every Show every other division sentence in two steps. The first have been done for you, the first two. So let's take a look at what they did in 1a. So they first had this problem, uh, let's see, 1.8 divided by 6 equals 0 0.3, or 3 tenths. Okay, I can see how they would have gotten that, right? 18 tenths divided by 6 would give us 3 tenths. Awesome. Then they look at this problem, 1.8 divided by 60. Oh, I see. It's a very similar problem, right? 1.8, right? We start with the same whole. And instead of dividing by 6... We divide by 60. So I see what they've done here. They've said, well, this is the same problem as 1.8 divided by 6 divided by 10, right? Because we just take this 60 and we break it into two pieces, divided by 6 divided by 10, right? And then we know we've already done this problem. 1.8 divided by 6 is 0 0.3 or 3 tenths, right? So we just need to do that divided by this remaining 10, and that gives us our answer of three hundredths. And this does make sense, right? In this in this group, we divided into groups of six. In this group, we divided into groups of sixty, so there must be a ten there must be uh, ten times fewer, right, or a tenth as many of these groups of since the groups are ten times larger, right? Okay, that makes sense. So let's take a look at if we can do uh, this problem. Um, 14.6 divided by 2. So let's see. Well, there's 14 ones. So first we've got to do this problem. I see 14 ones. 14 ones divided by 2 is 7. And 6 tenths divided by 2 is 3. So I think 14.6, or 14 and 6 tenths divided by 2 is 7.3. And then I look over here and I see the same whole, 14 and 6 tenths, right? Same as this. And instead of dividing by 2, I'm dividing by 20. So I feel like... That means that we could restate this problem as 14.6 divided by 2, all divided by 10, right? So we basically separated the divided by 20 part into divided by 2, then divided by 10. And since we already know the value of this, this is, after all, 7.3 or 7 and 3 tenths, we can just do this problem. 7 and 3 tenths divided by 10, we know that we'll move everything one place value to the right, so our 1s will become tenths. Our tenths will become hundredths, and we've got our new answer, 0 0.73. Awesome. Well, we're going to see patterns like that going the other direction in number two. So use place value reasoning and the first quotient to compute the second quotient. Use place value to explain how you place the decimal point. So let's take a look at C. C starts with this problem, 19 and 2 tenths divided by 40, and they give us the answer. It's 48 hundredths, right? 0 0.48, 48 hundredths. And they say, well, what if we divided that by a small number? Rather than dividing it by 40, what if we divided it just by 4? Well, let's see. So if we were dividing it by smaller groups, then we would get more of them. Let's see, I'm thinking we would get exactly 10 times as many of them, right? We used to divide into groups of 40. Now we only divide into groups of 4, so we must get 10 times as many uh, groups. So let's see. So I think we would just say, um, let's see, we're going ex to explain we get 10 times as many groups of 4 as when we grouped by 40. And so this, 19.2, this result, if we just multiply that times 10, we'll get our new answer. Let's see, if we multiply this number times 10, everything will move one place value to the left. So our tenths will become ones, and our hundreds will become tenths. And we're done. Wow. When we use these place value things, it's a, it's a really powerful way for us to figure out complicated answers quite easily sometimes. Uh, it looks like this is a fairly complicated problem, but if we just use our place value reasoning, we can figure out our answer very quickly. So thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Kong Has Problems. I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.